Let's go over to our man Steve, Steve Rhodes as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Mastering Probability, folks. As you come over to our website at TFNN, you're going to see newsletters. You get newsletters. You're going to get Mastering Probability right on the right-hand side. You just hit that subscribe button. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $695, which is the savings of, of $199 or 22%. You can get it for a year for $1,195, which is the savings of $593 or 33%. Do yourself and give yourself a New Year's present, folks, okay? Go over, check it out. You're going to love it. If for some reason it doesn't work in 30 days, you get your money back. So you have everything to win, zero to lose. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, I think you forgot to say, and because of Santa Tom, they can actually get those newsletters for less if they take advantage of the uh, new Tiger Dollar. That's movie. right, folks. And right on so the front. Tell them about that. Tell it, them about that. Yeah, on the front page, folks, there's no doubt. We have the Tiger Dollar sale. It just started this morning. And it only goes for 12 days, so check it out right in the front page because it's a way that you can save 10, 20, uh, up to 40% this time. You know, so exactly. it's, it's, it's a good value. It's a great value. Yeah, so we, we have to say thank you to you, you know, Santa Claus. Yeah, I love which, it. Which ho, Santa, ho, ho, ho! <laughs> <laughs> and you arrive again in what, uh, in, uh, in just uh, 10 days, basically? I know. That, 11 days. I, I, you know, we're in week 50 uh, from, from our trading standpoint. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I <laughs> yeah, know. Ab absolutely, absolutely. So uh, uh, I thought what we would do here is just start by taking a look at our annual seasonal cycle, which okay. would suggest that the Santa, now, the Santa Claus rally, a lot of folks take a look at the Santa Claus rally and look at the time period from uh, Christmas Eve on. Uh, really, the Santa Claus rally begins in October. I mean, you've got to make all those toys. Yeah. And where they really rally, typically, if we take a look at the last 80 some odd years out here, we see that the Dow, this is what we're looking at here, the Dow typically forms a bottom in October. It also forms a bottom towards the uh, first week of January, moves lower into the end of January, moves higher into May. Uh, so we'll take a look at these uh, cycles. And in fact, if we take a look at this calendar year, 2021, we'll see that the seasonal cycle dates have been working really relatively well and so they're identified here at the lows or the bottoms um, are shown with the green arrows the tops with the uh, red arrows out there so the seasonal cycle has those key turn dates the end of january as i mentioned mid-may followed by a june bottom then another top in mid uh, july and then the final bottom in uh, in the month of october so the month of December also, Tom, I, I don't know if you knew this, but it has the highest probability of closing above November's close. Now, this is Look data. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, this, this is data going back to January of 1970. And it just compares yep. close versus close. So I don't want people to overthink this. It's just the probability of one month closing above the prior month. And the month of December has got that uh, largest bias. And the reason why I want to make that statement is that as long as the Dow closes above 34,483, and we're pretty well above that, that will fulfill that outcome that we took a look at. So it's about close versus close, not about taking out the high of November. Okay. So it's a, it's a little nuance out there, but kind of like your little nuance about the A to B equals CD pattern right. out here. And I don't want people to misinterpret uh, this. So the Dow will fulfill that normal pro probability as long as it closes above 34 483. And again, that's just simply based upon this probability table of going back to January of 1970. Now, one reason to anticipate. So this is kind of you and I kind of talking about, hey, what the market do on Friday? Is that an A to B equals CD to the upside? Which would then suggest taking out the highs uh, that we've seen. I know. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. But, but OK, and, and that's absolutely a possibility it's still in there. And it would fit along that seasonal cycle. However, one reason to anticipate that the high may be in is, and we're taking a look at the Dow here. Now, this is the daily time frame, is the Dow formed a TD9 topping pattern back on November 8th. And this is bar number eight that is out here. This is a pattern, Tom, that I teach subscribers. It is really a great pattern. It helps us to identify key levels of breakout support, breakdown resistance out there. And so another reason for folks to go ahead and at least subscribe for, for a 30-day time period. So we have a valid top inside of the Dow. That, again, formed on November the 8th. And that led to also a 
TD9 count bottom was bar number nine. So when tops or bottoms form on this pattern, Tom, it must be on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. So there's three bars to really pay attention to. Here we'll get take a look at the Dow, the top of TD9 count top, the bottom a TD9 count bottom. And we can see that price made its way up to this resistance level of 35, 952.63. Based upon utilizing this indicator, this tool, that is where the breakdown began. There was a slight close above it on Friday. I require two closes above resistance or two closes below support to give us a, a real something other than a, a one hit wonder out there. Um, so we've got those daily top and bottom signals in place. And when we take a look at each of the four core cash index charts, we can see that the S&P, the NASDAQ, uh, each of these, so the S&P's got a, what I refer to as a road momentum indicator top, both the S&P and the NASDAQ 100, another pattern that I teach subscribers in the videos that come with uh, the newsletter subscribership. So we've got those tops. We already talked about the TD9 count top on the Dow Jones and the Russell 2000, as we like to refer to as a sell the D point out there. It also had wave number seven. That's part of Basil Chapman. So there's valid tops for the core indices that we trade out here, the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Russell 2000. And therefore, we should anticipate that the top may be in. And the, the Dow charts show us really the reason to, re to respect this because of these TD9 counts. Now, watch this. This, Tom, is an annual chart for the Dow. And if we take a look at this, we are now in the bar following bar number nine on an annual basis. Wow. For TD9 count tops. That's so remember, crazy, man. The, the top or bottom of this pattern, yeah, it occurs on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. Now, the cool thing about this pattern is whatever this year's high ends up being, if we close above it on a yearly basis, it tells about a strong momentum move to the upside. But right now, we really need to respect these TD9 counts, and the daily charts really showed us that. Now, if we take a look at the 2000 top, I know it says 200 top, but if we take a look at the 2000 top, it was bar number eight that actually formed that pattern. And then we had a, a decline for a three-year time period. If we look at all of our core cash indices out here between the Dow, the SP, NASDAQ, this is on the annual basis out here, the Russell, Which is the huge. semis, the transport. Yep. There are a lot of TD9 count tops yeah, that are in play right now. So it doesn't matter whether our highs for this year get taken out or not. This is a bigger picture, and it's real bigger picture for us to really pay attention. Because if this is a major top, and you and I have talked about this before. This this chart here goes back to 1926. Yeah. And if you take a look at an annual basis. When there's major tops that form, we usually see declines for two to four years out here. And those are what these uh, red numbers uh, and these arrows on this chart are uh, showing us. So um, it's going to be it's. You know, so we may take out the highs this year. I I'm leaning more towards the fact that we don't and that the top for the market may be in, and we'll have to take a look at critical support levels, and I show those to subscribers as well, and maybe on the next update next week, you know, we'll take a look at those as well out here, but uh, there's the potential that we're in store for some kind of major top and a decline, maybe into 2023 sometime. You're gonna love it, man. And Ace, hey, see, so uh, let me ask you, so I got th this month going, so let's say when we get into January, we know we're either gonna have a top, but if we, yes. if we back down then on that month, that is going to be the beginning of a confirmation for that TD9 top, right? It, it will. Okay. Um, I mean, price but you like too much. No, I, I understand that. Cause you, you, yes. You, that's cool, though. That means by February, well, yeah. January, February. Yeah, that's cool, though, man. Either way. Right. All right. Cool. Yeah. And we'll be able to take a look at daily and weekly right. and monthly key levels of support. When those things start failing, Tom, right. that's really the confirmation. Right, uh, of the uh, monthlies, yes. Yeah. And folks, exactly. it's really easy to get his newsletter. All this is in a newsletter, folks. Come over to TFNN. You go into newsletters, you hit Mastering Probability. Thanks, man. You bet. Take care, Tom. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Are you having fun trading the